the opening. Yes. And we get our breakthrough. That's what we should be about, people of God. Amen. We don't come to church just because it's Sunday. Okay. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. We come expecting to meet God yes. in this place. Amen. And this is a place where his presence dwells. study about the tabernacle and the temple. How the people were excited to be in the presence of God. Don't take it for granted. There are people the 1040 women have never even heard about Jesus. Amen. Don't know his saving grace today. Amen. We are so blessed that we are being taught. Yes. We are being taught. And as Sister Audrey prayed Amen. concerning leaders. Yes. And I said just look at you God. As the Spirit of God connects with the Spirit of God, because that's the word to that. That's a praise break right there. That's a shout out to the Lord right there. Well, we bless him today. We bless him today. Hallelujah. As we've entered into this Hebrew, high holy days. Just celebrated Rosh Hashanah, the new year, called the head of the year. The Jewish year, 5771, is already here. Already here. The new year is already here. Amen. Praise your holy name, O oh God, Hallelujah. according to God's word. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah to the King. The word for today is Holy Spirit fullness. Holy Spirit fullness. In your worship bulletin, we listed the foundational scriptures for this word. Exodus chapter 1, verse 5. You don't have to look up all the scriptures for our guests. You can get the CD on next Sunday. It'll be available for you. You have pencil and paper, you can write them down. And everyone should have a wish of bulletin with the scriptures. Exodus chapter 1 verse 5. Exodus chapter 3 verses 13 through 17. Exodus chapter 3, verses 13 through 17. Numbers chapter 11, verses 16 through 30. Numbers chapter 11, verses 16 through 30. Luke chapter 10, verses 1 through 24. Luke chapter 10, verses 1 through 24. Now in these foundational scriptures, starting with the book of Exodus, we find that there were 70 descendants of Jacob who were in Egypt. And that's based upon Genesis chapter 46, verses 26 through 27. Counted 70 people, which did not include the wives. Amen? Only the men were counted. The males were counted. In Exodus chapter 3, verses 13 through 17, we find the command of God, specifically in verse 16, wherein God told Moses to go and gather the elders. The elders are leaders. Go and gather the elders, the leaders of Israel together and say to them, the Lord God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, of Isaac, and of Jacob, appeared to me, saying, I have surely visited you and seen what is done to you in Egypt. Preparation to move forward into the promised 
lame. Amen. Amen. This is preparation, preparation to move forward into the promised land. Go to Moses. Gather the elders. Gather the leaders of Israel and tell them that I, I, I visited Egypt and I've seen the affliction of my people. I've heard their cry. I feel their pain. So now it's time for you, Moses, to meet with the leaders and tell them that it is moving out time. It's time to move into the promised land. That's a word for God's people today, if you can see it. It's time to move into what God called us to. Exodus chapter 24, we find that the number of elders is listed as 70, 7, 0, 70. Elsewhere in scripture we find the word elders, but it's only in specific places where we see them defined by the number 70, 70. Amen? In Numbers chapter 11, verses 16 through 30, we find the 70 elders of Israel were commissioned by the Spirit of God to help Moses in addressing the needs of the people. Now this commissioning was in response to the complaints that went forth from the mixed multitude, that mixed group that came out of Egypt with Israel. That mixed group in Numbers 11 and 4 who said that they were tired of the manna that God provided. They wanted meat. They had an intense craving, if you will, for the foods of Egypt. They wanted meat. They reminisce about the fish, the cucumbers, the melons, the leeks, the onions, and the garlic. Said, we want that. We're tired of this manna, although God was the one who provided the manna. The fleshly virus of craving a.k.a. also known as lust, spread throughout the camp. Moses and God heard the weeping and the gnashing of the teeth of the folks. And Moses and God both didn't like it. They were very upset. And God was so upset, he just took them out. The Lord said, since you want me, I'll give you me. Not just for one day or a few days, but for a whole month. I'm going to give you me. You would have meat coming out of your nose, and you would get sick of the meat. Be careful about complaining Amen. about what God has blessed you Amen. with. Amen. Huh? Amen. Amen. He didn't have to do it, but he did it. Amen. He could have allowed them to starve to death, Amen. but he said, I'll rain down a blessing Amen. from heaven on you. Amen. We're singing, let it rain. What do we... God is raining down blessings every day. Amen. Kept them from being starved out. Every day he provided what they needed. So be careful about those viruses that you allow to intermingle with you. Mm. Amen. See, God does not discriminate against people, but he knows that Certain folks you don't need to hook up with. Amen. So those folks who were not of the same mind and heart of the children of Israel infested them. So the people were at the, the mouth of the, 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 the door of the tent crying out, crying, complaining. These are people who God has already brought them across the Red Sea. made a highway through the sea for them, yet they complain. How much God does for us and we still complain? Oh, Amen. The spirit of complaint never satisfied. And what are we doing for God? But yet many people are doing nothing to have the audacity to complain and be mad at God. Amen. Bless you, Jesus. Now, when God said that he was going to provide this meat, Moses was just like, how in the world are you going to do this, God? Now, he's seen God do all kinds of miracles.